What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be going over my pulverized leveling build here that I used for season six and this is a build I plan on using in hardcore as well. I just decided to start out in softcore this season so that way I can learn all of the game mechanics before I make the transition into hardcore later in the season. Now, before we get started, I did want to mention that I do live in Florida and we do have a hurricane coming. So it might take me a little bit more time before I can get some in-game builds out to you guys. But I do have a lot of builds planned for the Druid class this season before I swap over to testing out the brand new overpowered class, Spiritborn. But with that being said, let's go ahead and go over the build. So for our seals, we're going to be using Pulverize Claw so we can keep up our shapeshift buffs. Then we have our Poison Creeper for the critical strike chance buff that you get from that and then we're going to be picking up cataclysm for our ultimate so we can overpower with provocation and get a really strong cataclysm and this helps out a lot when you're doing bosses and then we're going to be using earthen bulwark for our crowd control break and then last but not least we're going to be using cyclone armor now this is a flex spot i just like the cyclone armor for the additional damage reduction from non-physical sources Moving down to our spirit boons, we're using weariness on the deer as always. We are spirit bonded into the eagle and we're picking up scythe talons as well as swooping attacks. And then on the wolf, we're going to be using calamity just to extend the duration of our cataclysm. And then for the snake, we're going to be using obsidian slam to get those extra overpowers with our pulverize. Moving on to our aspects and uniques, obviously there are no uniques in this build because it is a leveling build and I do want to mention that I didn't even have all of these defensive aspects on my build and as you can see in the gameplay footage I have up on the screen, I was able to complete a tier 20 pit run without even utilizing my paragon points and I did that just so I could show you guys just how tanky this build is and how it still manages to put out a decent amount of damage even though we are using the druid and it's not necessarily one of the best classes this season. So starting out with the helmet, we are running the juggernaut aspect and that's because armor is a big deal this season and getting that armor cap can actually be quite difficult especially in the early game and this specific aspect just helps you reach that a little bit easier then for the chest piece we're using the aspect of might for the damage reduction after a basic attack on the gloves we're sliding in the aspect of earth sign horror on our pants we are going to be using the skinwalker aspect so that way we get that additional hill and that's something we typically lack early on in the game that can really juice up our survivability without much investment then for the boots, we are going to be using the aspect of quicksand. We're pairing that with the umbral aspect here, but we'll talk about that in just a second. On our weapon, we're obviously using the shockwave aspect. Then for our amulet, we're using the aspect of retaliation, and they actually buffed this aspect up quite a lot this season, so it's probably one of the best in the slot aspects at any stage of the game. Then for our first one, using the aspect of Umbral, and the reason why we're pairing that with Quicksand is because when you have the aspect of Umbral, it gives you resources back when you crowd control enemies, and what Quicksand does is basically allow all of your Earth skills to slow enemies, and when you pair those two together, it's pretty easy to maintain your resources when you're using Earth skills in the early game. And then for our second ring, we're going to be running the Blood Boiling aspect, and I absolutely love this aspect for early game leveling, especially with Pulverize, because you get those guaranteed overpowers, and this aspect alone allowed me to scale into the penitent difficulty and that is where I spent the majority of my time leveling my character and when I did go ahead and do my tier 20 pit this actually helped clear out mob packs really fast so I could get to the boss quickly and have plenty of time to kill that boss to unlock torment one Moving on to our gear stats, for our helm, we're going to be running armor, resistance to all elements, and spirit per second, and then obviously picking up the total armor tempering, and whatever you choose for your second tempering is up to you. For the chest piece, we're doing the same thing, armor, resist to all elements, more spirit per second, and the tempering total armor. For our gloves, we're running ranks to pulverize if you can find a pair of gloves with that. I did not have that myself. Max life as well as damage to close enemies on our offensive tempering. On our pants, we're going for armor, resistance to all elements, and max life, and then grabbing up another total armor temper here. Then on our boots, we're going to be picking up armor, spirit per second, and movement speed, and then our tempering is also going to be movement speed. And if you can find a pair of boots with the attacks reduce evades cooldown, I would suggest that you use those. However, if you have evade stacks, that's perfect fine as well for our weapon we are going to be using a two-hand mace to get that extra overpower damage and then we're using willpower max life critical strike damage or overpower damage it doesn't really matter and then for our temperings we're using chance for pulverize to hit twice as well as the damage to close enemies for our amulet we're running max life movement speed and crit chance grabbing up some more movement speed on the mobility tempering and damage to close enemies and then for both of our rings we're going to be running crit strike chance attack speed max life damage to close enemies and do your best to get both 
both of those resource temperings to be cataclysm cooldown reduction. It really helps just keep your cataclysm up a lot more consistently, so that way you don't have to just save it for when you're killing high health enemies like bosses. Now for your rune words, I like to go with the crit chance rune word as well as the resource regen rune word here. And then on our gems, if you do not have those runes yet, go with emeralds in the weapon, sapphires in all the armor pieces, and then of course diamonds across the board on your jewelry pieces. Onto our skill tree, and I do have it all set up for each skill that you choose while you're leveling, but we're going one point claw into enhanced claw, then five points pulverize into raging pulverize. Now if I was playing hardcore, I would probably go with primal pulverize in the early game just to make sure I don't die, and then swap into raging pulverize once I got all of my defense is set up correctly. Then we're going three points iron fur, one point wild heart, as well as three points into wild impulses. Then for our defensive tree, we're going one point earthen bulwark into one point enhanced earthen bulwark, three points ancestral fortitude, and one point into cyclone. Then our companion skill tree, we grab one point poison creeper into brutal poison creeper, then three points into feral aptitude. Down onto our wrath tree, we're going three points mending stone and three points provocation three points crushing earth, one point safeguard, and then three points stone guard, and then obviously picking up one point neurotoxin and three points into envenom. And for our ultimate skill tree, we go three points defiance, three points circle of life for that added healing, and three points natural disaster, because we will be getting some consistent vulnerability when we have our cataclysm up. Then for our cataclysm, we go five points cataclysm for the cooldown and a little bit of added damage and then we're picking up Supreme Cataclysm to extend the duration of our Cataclysm as well as apply vulnerability to our enemies. Then we're picking up two points in Catastrophe here. Then we're grabbing three points Quick Shift, three points Height and Senses, and one point into Natural Fortitude so we can keep up our Fortify, so we can maintain a Fortify without much difficulty. And then for our key passive, we're gonna be using Earth Sign Strength. Then for our mercenary, we're just going to be using the very first one we get in the game, and I believe his name is pronounced Rahir, and we're going into shield charge and picking up Rahir's guard for that 50% added armor. Then we're grabbing up provoke and then moving into mocking lure so we get that increased damage to enemies that are taunted by Rahir. Now if you want to go unlock all of your mercenaries so you can have a reinforcement mercenary, you can use whichever one you'd prefer. I just have Aldekin here with Flame Surge and then I use any time you cast a skill for that to proc. But that's really it for the video guys. That is my pulverized leveling build here for Season 6. And like I said, I do plan on using this build when I transition over to Hardcore. This thing is incredibly tanky and I never really came close to dying even while I was doing my Tier 20 Pit Run to unlock Torment 1. And I've actually been able to successfully farm in Torment 1 with this build as I transition into my end game build, which I hope to have out to you guys before the weekend. However, with the storm coming, there's really no telling when I'll be able to have enough time to finish that one up. But as always, guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them down in the comments section. I will answer them as soon as I see them. If any of you guys out there are also in the path of Hurricane Milton, I hope you guys stay safe out there. And peace out, guys. I will see you in the next one.